English Year 8, Term 3B, Creative Writing. Okay, welcome to Week 2, Lesson 3 of this scheme. Now, this is the final lesson on descriptive writing, and then in the next session, we'll move on to narrative writing, which is very similar. Now, to access the retrieval quiz for this video, uh, you've got a number of options. If you're on a PowerPoint or a PDF, you can just click the hyperlink, which is the Knowledge Retrieval Sheet icon at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you've downloaded this video or it's a printout, you could just uh, type in the uh, address there, HTTPS, type that in and you'll go straight to it. Or alternatively, if you're on YouTube, just click, click the link in the description there and you'll have five questions to answer and all the information you need is on your knowledge retrieval sheet. So in this session, we're going to put together all the learning we've been doing over the past couple of weeks to write a piece of description. And our learning intentions for this is to construct a descriptive piece with deliberate shifts in time. So all the skills that you've been developing, we want to see those embedded as well as thinking about time, not just moving chronologically, but looking at flashbacks and flash forwards, kind of what we began doing in last lesson. And we're going to construct a piece using that. To aspire, you're going to craft a descriptive piece. And remember, we always talk about this word craft, meaning care and carefulness, meaning um, passion, meaning uh, more like a, an art form than just a piece by piece, paint by numbers piece of description. So that's the main difference between constructing, following all the steps I go through, and crafting, taking more care, perhaps even doing your own research. And those are our learning intentions for this session today. Now here's the image that you're going to be describing today. And ideally what we'd want is a printout of this image so that you could visually plan around it. Now you may have access to a printer and if you do, brilliant. I suggest you print out this particular picture. If you can't, that's absolutely fine. Perhaps just in the center of your page, just write homeless person. And around those words, you can actually be putting down your ideas. Alternatively, you could spend three to four minutes sketching it out, particularly if you're artistic. It doesn't even matter if it's stick man. Um, so long as you've got something to base your plan around. But before we begin, think back to those four uh, steps of planning that are on your retrieval sheet and that we went through last lesson. Just begin with the first five to eight seconds, taking in the mood of the piece and the context. Think about the fact that this is a homeless person. Think about the mood of depression uh, and the, the mood of melancholy, the mood of, um, of feeling hopeless. Anything like that that you can begin with would be brilliant. But remember to think outside the box and be creative. You might have a different take on that. And that's absolutely fine. So for our starter today, we're going to visually plan out this piece before we begin writing. So you have five questions in the yellow box there that I want you to write answers for. So down the margin of your notebook, write numbers one to five, and I want you to write in full sentences the answers to these questions. So first, what's the overall mood or atmosphere of this image? If you're struggling with words to use for that, go back to your vocabulary matrix. Um, think about the words I mentioned in the previous slide. Number two, how could the weather reflect the mood? So if you've chosen, for example, depression, what weather would we associate with that? Be specific as well. Number three, what four to five key details could you focus on in this image? So what are you gonna to center your focus on? It's a very sparse image, there's not much to describe, but zoom in, see what you can find. Number four, which character will you be and what's their past trauma? Now, obviously there's only one character in this picture and you're welcome to be that person, but why not be a different person? Perhaps a bystander, someone walking past, a police officer, be creative, maybe even use that uh, versatile character that you created last week. Finally, what details are there around the outside of the image that we can't see? There'll be things we can't see and I want you to be creative and tell me what those are because those could be vital in your description. That's your challenge as well. What's not visible in this image? Use that imagination. So give yourself about six minutes to answer those five questions. Pause the recording and then when you finish, we'll go over some potential ideas. Okay, so overall mood and atmosphere. There is no right answer to this. However, general ideas would be depression, despondency, isolation, hopelessness. Those would be the main ones. Now, you might have gone a bit left field and gone somewhere different, and that's absolutely fine, so long as your writing is clear. How the weather reflects the mood, I think I would be going for darkness, 
clouds, uh, perhaps it's raining. And I think that would reflect it. I could go with sunny, but it would have to be oppressively sunny, like a heat wave. Um, but based on the way he's dressed there, I'm imagining it's very cold. And again, perhaps that represents, in terms of a pathetic fallacy, the cold hearted nature of the people around him. The details then for number three, obviously you've got this man, but you might want to describe the empty cup, the cup that should be full of money and is just lying there empty. Maybe there's a single penny in there and I could maybe personify that penny. And if you're not sure what personification means, look at your retrieval sheet. It is on there. Uh, third thing I might focus on uh, perhaps is the street that he's sitting on, the dirt and the grime and the stains. Maybe the stains tell a story, maybe the grime tells a story, maybe um, something happened there, blood stain for example could be there, maybe the coffee stain where somebody bumped into him and, and swore at him. And then for my other two details I think I'd pick something from around the outside, maybe somebody walking past and ignoring him, um, maybe a towering building where all the um, workers work. That could be something as well that you focus on. And number five, anything around the outs uh, the character, sorry, number four, um, obviously you could be this person. I think I wouldn't. I think I'd be an old man who walks by the same old man with the past trauma uh, that I always come up with where his past trauma is that his best friend died in the war. I'd have this person come and help him up. He gives him some money uh, and he helps him off his feet at the final part. And I think then the sun would come out. And he would be the person for number five that we can't see around the outside. Now, obviously, those are not right answers. They're just potential responses to get your minds moving. OK, so here's now where we're going to put all that learning we've done over the past couple of weeks together and produce a full piece of description. Now, what I'm looking for here is about one side to a side and a half worth of writing. I'm looking for a full piece of description. So you should be spending here about half an hour on this piece. Uh, you've already got some key ideas to help you plan. It's up to you if you want to complete a full and detailed plan following the steps that we went through the four steps last lesson. But what I'm looking for is range of sentence types. So I've left on the screen there the different types of sentences you could use. A range of sophisticated vocabulary, your vocabulary matrix that you saw last week. And then also think about our learning intention. We're looking at shifts in time. I want to see a flashback. I want you to move back to, if you're this homeless person, what was he like before? Something bad happened to him that caused this um, homelessness. And what's the trigger? Or you're a bystander like I was, and maybe you have a different past trauma. So begin your piece using those stock transferable phrases that we've been learning. Use those to get you started. Begin with some pathetic fallacy, make it rain or make it dark, whatever you want to put. Second paragraph, then you want to be the character, maybe the character who walks by or maybe this homeless person. Then in your third paragraph, I'd move then onto your flashback. And then in your fourth paragraph, then back to reality, back to the situation. And then finally, uh, maybe a bit of pathetic fallacy at the end, maybe a change in mood. Maybe the sun comes out. Maybe there's a bit of hope. But obviously, I don't want to restrict you. Those are just there for ideas to get you started. So spend 30 minutes on this. Pause the recording. Time yourself. See if you can stick to those times you went through last lesson. And then when you finish, press play and we'll go through what you've got. OK, so well done on your hard work on that piece of description. I'm hoping that you're proud of it and that what you've written is something you're willing to show people at home, maybe even email or send in to your teachers as well. Now, what I want you to do next is read through that description carefully. And I want you to underline, label, or highlight any of the following things you've used in that blue box. So look at the criteria there. Have you used three of the five senses? Have you used not just sight, but smell and sound? Have you used sophisticated vocabulary, the words we've been learning, pathetic fallacy, uh, a simile start for a sentence, starting a word uh, sentence with like. Uh, have you used a one word sentence, a short sentence, a one sentence paragraph? And have you got a metaphor or a simile in there? So go through your piece of work, spend about seven minutes doing this. Highlight if you've got a highlighter. If you don't, just underline. And then I want you to label in the margin any of those criteria that you have. Like I say, six minutes, pause the recording and then press play when you're finished. And to finish today, we have our rag of key skills. Now, here are our five things I'm looking for. Number one, have you varied your sentences throughout your description? Write that sentence out and then red, amber or green it. Have you used not just the same starts like the and as, but have you used like one word sentences? All those things that were in the criteria in the blue box. 
Secondly, have you used tip top to start new paragraphs? Now, what we mean by that is TI is time. Have you moved to a different time, like your flashback for a new paragraph? A new person, so a different character. Uh, TO would be topic. Perhaps you're writing now about a different place. And, and the other one as well is place. So if you've done that correctly and you've moved paragraphs and you've paragraphed well and the problem is when you're excited about your writing sometimes you forget about your paragraphs and it just becomes all one long piece this is your chance now to go back through and make sure there's paragraphs in there have you used ambitious vocabulary throughout if you have green have you got that flashback that's our key learning today if you have brilliant and finally have you used the weather to create a particular atmosphere so that you've got that pathetic fallacy in there Red, amber, or green, each of those. Any reds then will be your targets for next lesson. And hopefully you've been meeting the targets you've been setting yourself each session because the onus is on you now. There's no teacher going around saying to you, right, this is your target. You're the one saying, this is my target. Well done on all your hard work in today's session.